times in Psalm 64 verse 1 hear my voice O God in my prayer preserve my life from the fear of the enemy look at verse 10 in verse 10 the righteous shall be glad in the Lord I will be glad in the Lord and shall trust in him all the upright in heart shall glory look at Psalm 65 reading from verse 2 it says in Psalm 65 verse 2 O thou that hearest prayer unto thee shall all flesh come he will answer your prayer look at verse 4 in verse 4 it says blessed is the man whom thou chooses and causes to approach unto thee that he may dwell in thy cause we shall be satisfied i will be satisfied with the goodness of thy house even of thy holy temple psalm 66 reading from verse 7 in Psalm 66 verse 7, he rules by his power forever. His eyes behold the nations. Let not the rebellious exalt themselves. Look at verse 8. In verse 8, O oh bless our God, ye people, and make the voice of his praise to be heard. Psalm 67 from verse 1. It tells us, it says, God be merciful unto us and bless us and cause his face to shine upon us. In verse 2, it says that thy way may be known upon earth, thy saving health among all nations. Verse 3, it says in verse 3, let the people praise thee, O God, let all the people praise thee. And then he tells us in Psalm 68, reading from verse 3. Psalm 68, verse 3. But let the righteous be glad. Any righteous person in the house today, let the righteous be glad. Let them rejoice before God. Yea, let them exceedingly rejoice. Look at verse 19. In verse 19, blessed be the Lord who daily, daily, daily loadeth us with benefits it will load you today for the benefits and blessings coming from calvary and from the cross of christ in jesus name blessed be the lord who daily loadeth us with benefits even the god of our salvation the final verse in the last verse there verse 35 O god thou art terrible out of thy holy places the god of israel is he that giveth strength and power unto his people blessed be the lord blessed be god and i pray that your life and your testimony will give glory praise to god in jesus name today as we look at all those psalms we're talking about the power of prayer praise and true worship the power of prayer praise and true worship three things we're considering in the psalms number one the effectual fervent prayer of true followers you come to the lord you are following after the lord you have turned away from sin you have come out of sin and you have come to the savior you have come out of darkness and you have come to the light you have come out of yourself and you have come into himself and you are now following after the lord when you pray god will answer your prayer effectual fervent prayer of true followers number two the endeared faithful princes of the favored and the lord has favored you he has forgiven your sin that's favor 
He has set you free. That's people. He has written your name in the book of life in heaven. That's people. He has made you to inherit the kingdom. That's people. He has made you to be a joint here with the Lord Jesus Christ. That is people. And then as you see the favor of God upon your life because he saved you. And because he's preserving you now. And he has promised that he will be with you. He will never leave you. Even to the end of the age. The end of the world. You are faithful. And because of that, you are faithfully giving praises unto the Lord. The endeared faithful praises of the favored. Point number three, the empowered fruitful proclaimers of his fullness. Of his fullness have we, have we all received. And then Paul the apostle prayed and he said that the God of heaven will open your eyes, the eyes of your mind, the eyes of your inner man. And then he will fill you with all the fullness of God. And then with the experience of the fullness of God, you take that everywhere and you are proclaiming that and you will be fruitful. I will be fruitful. We shall all be fruitful in Jesus' name. Let's come to number one. Is the effectual fervent prayer of true followers. It says in Psalm 64, reading verses 1 and 2. It says, hear my, hear my voice, O God, in my prayer. Your voice comes out clear. Your voice comes out definite and you have something you are asking the Lord and as you are asking the Lord and with your voice you are not praying and sleeping you are not praying and dozing you are praying and you are really talking to the Lord and you are saying oh Lord hear my voice so oh God in my prayer preserve my life from fear of the enemy preserve my life from fear of the enemy you see enemies have one goal they have one intention is to destroy life and there you are telling the lord oh lord my life will not be in the hand of the enemy i thought you say that for yourself my life, my destiny will be in the hand of God and therefore Lord don't let the enemy take your place and then take my life, squeeze my life terminate my life, destroy my life, oh Lord preserve my life from the fear of the enemy he has done that already the enemy will not have the final say in your life when God says yes, that your life will move on, your life will go on, and your life will be preserved, the enemy cannot come and say no. Pharaoh cannot say no. Nebuchadnezzar cannot say no. Herod cannot say no. Magicians cannot say no. Occultic people cannot say no. God has said yes in your life. He said, I am come that they might have life and that they might have life. How abundantly God has said yes. Calvary has said yes and Christ has said yes. No enemy will say no in your life. Look at, look at verse 2 there. It says in verse 2, hide me from the secret counsel of the wicked that secret counsel conspiracy of the wicked will not get to your doorstep and from the insurrection of the workers of iniquity look at verse 10 in verse 10 it tells us the righteous shall be glad you cannot be glad in the grave it means you'll you stay alive your life is preserved and in your life that is preserved you'll be a happy man a happy woman happy boy happy girl in jesus name the righteous shall be glad in the Lord and shall trust in him all the upright, no exception, if you are born again, all the upright in heart shall glory. Look at Psalm 63, we're reading from verse 1. It says in Psalm 63, reading there from verse 1, is telling us about how the Lord himself, how he's going to preserve us, how he's going to protect us. It says, O God, thou art my God. 
I am saved, thou art my God. I am sanctified, thou art my God. I am following after the will and the law of God. I am thine, and thou art mine. Early will I seek thee, my soul thirsteth for thee, my flesh longeth for thee. In a dry and thirsty land where no water is. And then he tells us in verse 8, it says in verse 8, my soul followeth hard after thee. I'm a true follower. I'm following after the Lord. And then I'm not leaving any space between me and the Lord because my soul followeth after thee very hard. Thy right hand upholdeth me. The right hand of the Lord will uphold you. Amen. You will not fall. And then he tells us we must be prayer for any need you have. Any request you have, you bring it to the Lord. Look at Philippians chapter 4. In Philippians chapter 4, we're reading from verse 6. Philippians chapter 4, we're coming to verse 6. It says, be careful for nothing. That word careful for nothing, it means don't have anxious care. Don't have a worrying mind and don't have anxiety and be careful for nothing. Anything, whatever in your life, the Lord will fix you up. The Lord will fix me up. You, you know, there are people that pray, but the problem with them is before they pray, they're too careful, they're worried, they're anxious. During the prayer, the language of their prayer is the language of worry and anxiety. After the prayer, they keep on worrying. Why have you prayed? Before prayer, worry and anxiety. During the prayer, worry and anxiety. After the prayer, worry and anxiety. How are you obeying the word of God? You take all that care away from your heart. You're going to God before the prayer. Don't worry about anything because you're going to the God that will solve all your problems. And when you are coming to church, don't worry because you're coming to the temple of God and the sanctuary of the Lord. And if you're coming in the presence of God and you know God is going to answer your request, why are you worrying on the way? I will not worry. And then when you come to church, forget about my little faith. Your little faith will move a big mountain. If you have faith as a grain of mustard seed there in your heart, and because of that, you've come to the presence of God, all those mountains are taken away out of your life in Jesus' name. Be careful for nothing concerning the situation of your family be careful for nothing concerning the job that you are going to do in this day of unemployment be careful for nothing it is still god that promotes and it is still god that provides and you are precious in his sight he will not forget you he will not leave you because of that you have prayer you have fervent prayer you have the prayer of faith and you are following after the lord you will not go hungry be careful for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving with prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your request be made known unto god and once you tell him leave it there everything will be all right in your life everything will be all right today today everything will be all right every request you make before the lord leave it there and let it go the lord will take care of you and will take care of it in jesus name let's come back to psalm 65 we're reading from verse 2. Psalm 65, we're reading from verse 2. It says, O thou that hearest prayer. Do you see? That's the title of God. That's the name of God. That's the description of God. Thou that hearest prayer. Not only that you heard, not only that you will hear, 
even today thou art the God that answereth, that heareth prayer. Unto thee shall all flesh come. Unto thee shall all flesh come. Some of the flesh is talking about people, they are discouraged, come. They have been sinful, come. They have backslidden, come. They have been rejected by the people, come. They are suffering, come. They are sick, come. Unto thee shall all flesh come. The Lord will surprise you. Look at verse 4. In verse 4, it says, Blessed is the man whom thou choosest. You need to understand of the millions and billions of people in the world, the Lord came to you, knocked at your door. He said, you are precious in my sight. Me? You are so precious that I gave my only begotten son. I spared the angels. You are so precious to me and I'm looking for you. And I know you are a sinner. I know that. All I've seen are come short of the glory of God. I take all your sin. I put all your sin on my only begotten son. That's how precious you are to me. I know that the, the soul that sinned, it shall die. I took the death. I took your punishment. And I put it on my only begotten son. That's how precious you are to me. You have been in the slave market of the devil and nothing could redeem you or purchase you or buy you but then i spared my son he shed his blood and the blood of my only begotten son has purchased you that's how precious you are say i am precious and then he says now blessed is the man whom thou choosest the lord has chosen you for blessing the Lord has chosen you for happiness and the Lord has chosen you for freedom and the Lord has chosen you for victory. That dominion will be yours in Jesus' name. Amen. Blessed is the man. Even if that man is the only man in his family that God has chosen. Blessed is the woman. Even if that woman is the only woman in her family that God has chosen. He doesn't say cursed is the man that thou has chosen. Once the Lord has blessed you, all other causes will bypass you in Jesus' name. Curses from darkness and curses from the forest and curses from the background. Forefathers, everything has overpassed you in Jesus' name. Because now you go out, you are blessed. You come in, you are blessed. You stand up, you are blessed. You sit down, you are blessed. On Sunday, sunny day, you are blessed. On Monday, every day of the week, you are blessed because blessed is the man whom thou choosest and causes to approach unto thee that he may dwell in thy cause. We shall be satisfied with the goodness of thy house. There is goodness in the house of God. There is happiness in the house of God. There is blessing in the house of God. And I will be satisfied, say that, with the goodness of his house, even of thy holy temple. Look at Psalm 4, we're reading from verse 3. Psalm 4, reading from verse 3. It says, but no that the Lord has set apart him that is godly for, tell me, himself. I want you to picture everybody in the world, they're lining up, and then that one for Satan, that one for sickness, that one for calamity, that one for accident, that one for injury, that one for eternal destruction, and then it comes to your turn. It comes to my turn. I said it comes to my turn. And the Lord has set apart, he said, come out of the crowd, come out of that queue. 
and stay here. You are so precious. I cannot allow you to be on that line. You'll not be in the line of those who are going to be destroyed. You'll not be in the line of those who are going to perish forever in Jesus' name. It says, now know this, that the Lord has set apart him that is godly for himself. The Lord will hear when I call unto him. Will he hear your prayer? Look at verse 4. In verse 4 it says, stand in awe. If the Lord has set you apart, if you are a precious in the sight of the Lord, it says, stand in awe and sin not, commune with your own heart upon your bed, and be still, be still, and you will know that the Lord is God, and the goodness, greatness of the Lord will manifest in your life, in Jesus' name. Let's come back to the Psalms. We're looking at Psalm 66, and we're reading from verse 18. Psalm 66, we're reading now from verse 18. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. What's the psalmist saying here? The psalmist said, there are many enemies. Number one, Satan is an enemy. He has conquered that enemy for me. Say, he has conquered that enemy for me. <laughs> then he says, I know there are people in society, as I'm moving on, as I'm climbing up, some people are the enemies of progress. They don't want me, but God has conquered all society enemies for me and has conquered for you in Jesus' name. The background, that is all the things of the past that were tied about us, pulling us down and saying, you will not make it, you will not make it. The Lord himself has delivered you out of the kingdom of darkness and he has brought you into the kingdom of his dear son. Kingdom of darkness, all those enemies will not have power over you in Jesus' name. Now, the greatest of enemies, the most powerful of enemies, iniquity in my heart aha if satan cannot get me if society cannot get me if the evil spirits and powers in the world cannot get me self may get me and if i regard iniquity in my heart in my spirit if self is holding on to iniquity that self that is aligning agree will sin becomes the greatest enemy and so i say i know the trick the devil is playing he knows that all the other enemies are conquered and now he wants me to cherish and to hide and to embrace and to love iniquity in my heart and then my prayers cannot rise up to heaven. And I say, no, I will not fall to the trap of the devil. I will not fall into the trap of the devil. I, if you are not ready, just look at me. I will not fall into the trap of the devil. I say, iniquity, there is no chance for you in my heart. That's what I'm saying. I don't know what you are saying. Iniquity. Say it aloud. Iniquity. You will not have a chance in my heart. Because if I regard, if I cherish, if I embrace, if I lost after, and if I hold on to iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. Look at verse 19. Verse 19, beautiful. In verse 19, but verily, God has heard me. 
that means I didn't hold iniquity in my heart. I said, iniquity, get out of my sight. Sin, get out of my life. I will not allow that to take me down or to pin me down. But verily, God has had me. He has attended to the voice of my prayer. He will attend to the voice of your prayer. What are you? He will answer your prayer. He will attend to you. When you say attend, attend, it's like you went to visit your own father. And your father is a busy person, is attending to this, attending to this. And even though he's busy and other visitors have come and he says, I'm busy now, I don't have any time. And then other customers have come, tell them to hold on and wait. I'm busy now, I cannot attend to, to them. And then you come, a beloved son. You come, a beloved daughter. And then they inform your father and they say, it's so and so and he said let him come in let her come in he will attend to you even though he's not attending to other people he will attend to me today i said god will attend to me today but very late god has heard me and he has attended to the voice of my prayer look at uh, verse 20 there in verse 20 he tells us blessed be god which has not turned away my prayer blessed be god he didn't turn his ears away he didn't turn his mind away he didn't turn you away blessed be god which has not turned away my prayer no is mercy from me point number two we have the endeared faithful princes of the favored we're coming to psalm 66 reading from verse 1 psalm 66 we're reading from verse 1 it says make a joyful noise unto god all ye lands make a joyful noise unto the lord all ye lands and in verse 2 verse 2 tells us sing forth the honor of his name make his praise glorious make his praise glorious as you come to the lord you need to understand god's attitude to those who praise him god's attitude to the people that offer happy and grateful voices unto the lord and you see there are people when you say praise the lord you say i don't have anything to praise the lord for now when God does this, I will praise him. When God does that, I will praise him. And they are delaying their praises. And they delay the fulfillment of the promises of God. The Lord was bringing the children of Israel through the wilderness and was bringing them to the promised land. Before they got to the promised land, only two of them had been sent ahead and they have come back to say that place is ready for us the promised land is ready for us let us get up at once and let us move on and there was a jordan river before them and that jordan river your own jordan river is divided in jesus name only one step they will now get into the promised land i'm telling you that just one step you are coming to the promised land just one step you are coming to your promised land lo and behold look at jericho lo and behold look at the walls and the walls were high and then they could have said when it says sing forth the praises of the lord and shout his praise and make his praise glorious they have said what are we going they could have said what are we going to praise god for look at the jericho walls but uh, joshua their leader said don't look at jericho walls look at your god and then I am telling you, don't look at Jericho walls, look at your God. Are you ready? I said, look at your God. He said, we will go around once a day, and then two days, three days, four days, five days, six days. On the seventh day, we'll go around how many times? Seven times, perfection. And he says, after that, shout. 
and the people did not say i'm not ready yet when i see the wall come down i will shout the walls were still there and then joshua the man of god said shout and they shouted they praised the lord before the walls came down and from praising the lord all their walls came down and all your walls are coming down and when it comes to time after the message for you to praise god you will not say what am i praising god for after all look at this look at this look at this don't look at this don't look at that look at your god and all your walls will come down in jesus name jehoshaphat came to the point where he prayed and then he confessed and said we don't know what we're going to do all these enemies are so great and so terrible what are we going to do not only one enemy but enemies that are united in power in their confederacy and he prayed and prayed and prayed and then the prophet of god came to him and said tell your people you are not going to fight god will fight for you and god sent me to tell you you have nothing to fight or your god will fight for you the almighty will fight for you against sickness he'll fight for you against suffering he will fight for you against all the poverty in the land god will fight for you and if i don't need to fight what can i do i remember now i can sing and in psalm 62 verse 2 it says sing forth the honor of his name and Jehoshaphat got all the people together he said we're going to sing unto the lord the enemies were armed the enemies were determined and the enemies were still there and they were bragging we'll finish him will finish them no tribe will remain all those people of judah were believers we trust in god we will finish them and don't listen to them they are finished already in the court of heaven they are finished already what then will i do and then he told the people he chose people who can sing they began to sing praise the lord for his mercy endure it forever while they were singing the enemies turned on themselves and they destroyed themselves and Jehoshaphat and the people did not have to fight at all and even though they didn't fight at all all problems were solved and the lord is solving your problem for you and the lord is taking the mountain away from you but remember they sang and they praised the lord before those enemies were destroyed if you are not praising the lord and you are saying i am sad i don't know what i'm going to praise the lord for look at this one look at this one you are waiting too late and you are waiting too long when you praise the lord all those problems they are solved in jesus name you remember you are still you are students of the bible we call them paul and silas and it says uh, they were in the prison their legs were in the stalks it was in the night there was no light like this everything was dark and when things are dark like that and you are suffering and they're beat they're beating them and their backs were bleeding that's the time to complain that's the time to murmur i'm serving the lord i'm giving my time to god i left uh, my hometown and i'm over here and i came to philippi and i brought good news to them and look at the way they are treating us as if we're criminals and yet i'm a child of god and god what are you looking at many people will be complaining but then we're told when paul and silas were in that dungeon and it was midnight and then they began to sing do it unto god and paul the apostle started and then um, say, uh, silas followed and they prayed and they sang praises unto god while they were singing 
while you are singing in you know, all those bands in their feet everything became loosed the foundation of their prison everything was totally destroyed and God shook everything everything the devil has put around you to lock you up the almighty God will shake everything and then all the prison doors are open the prison doors of poverty all those prison doors are open and the prison doors of sickness all those doors are open even those who were not singing only two people singing all the other prisoners had them and they were set free and the philippian jailer also became saved as a result of that miracle upon miracle somebody somebody say miracle upon miracle power demonstration freedom freedom total liberty as they were singing the praise of the lord but remember they were singing before their locks were removed before the chains were removed and before the prison doors were opened you sing when it is still night you sing when the problems are still there and you praise the lord when the challenges are still there you'll be free I said, you'll be free. I will be free. You will be free. Our church will be free in Jesus' name. Look at Psalm 22, verse 3. Psalm 22, looking at verse 3. It tells us there how God responds, how God reacts to the praises of his people. But thou art holy, O thou that inhabitest the praises of Israel. Thou that inhabitest the praises of Israel. What had happened is as Paul and Silas were praising God, God came in and as God came in to inhabit the praises of Paul and Silas, because God is too big and because God is infinite, and because God is too great, that a prison door, and that prison was not able to contain the princes and the God who inhabits the princes of Israel, it burst open. When you are praising the Lord, all the things that surround you, like Balona, and God comes to inhabit the princes of the people of God, everything will be shattered everything will burst open and then you will come out all the things that tied you that you will not fly that you'll not get up that you'll not mount up they that wait upon the lord will renew their strength and then they'll mount up with wings as eagle and you will walk free in the day and you will not be fearful and you will not be weary and you'll not be tired you will run and you will not faint your time of progress has now come I said your time of progress has now come as you praise the Lord all the problems in your life they will vanish away in Jesus name look at first Thessalonians chapter 5 we're reading from verse 17 first Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 17 pray without ceasing don't go about as if you don't have any helper as if you don't have any healer as if you don't have any provider as if you don't have anyone that will supply you don't go about like an orphan you have a father in heaven ask it shall be given to you seek and ye shall find knock and every door will be open to you every door will be open to me pray without ceasing look at verse 18 in verse 18 in everything when you are before the jericho walls in everything it says in everything when you don't know where to turn and where you're going to go in everything give thanks give thanks for this is the will of god in christ jesus concerning you and as you give thanks all the other things that are out of place they will fall in place in jesus name 
you will praise God. I said you will praise God. And all your mountains are going to move away in Jesus' name. We'll come to point number three now. In point number three, we have the empowered, fruitful proclaimers of his fullness. We're coming to Psalm 68. In Psalm 68, we're reading from verse 11. Psalm 68, reading from verse 11. The Lord gave the word. The Lord gave the word. If you're going to do anything tangible in life, you need the word. You need the word. As a person who is managing or directing a company, you need the word. Everything depends on the word. Even the computer, even all the things we're using to decide and to plan and to strategize, we need the word. And anywhere you are and now that you come to the Lord, the greatest word, the highest word, and the most effective word, and the most powerful word, from God. The Lord gave the word. You think about a person that is going to deliver the nation of Israel out of their captivity from Egypt. Moses got the word. And you think about Joshua who is going to conquer all the Hivites, all the Jebusites, all the Perizzites, all the land of Canaan. The Lord appeared to him, gave him the word. You need the word. And you think about David who is going to conquer Goliath, that man had the word. If you are going to do anything on earth, you need the word. And the greatest of the words, the word of God, the Lord gave the word. You think about Jesus Christ, he said, the Father gave me the word, what I should say and what I should do. You need the word. And you think about the disciples of Jesus Christ, the people that were to go into all the world and turn the world upside down. They needed the word. And now it says here we are today, the Lord gave the word. Thank God he has given us the word. I said, thank God, he has given us the word. John chapter 6, we're looking at verse 63. It says, it is the spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profiteth nothing. It's not your stature, how tall you are, how big you are. It is not your position. It is not who you are. It is the word. Look at this. The, prof the flesh profiteth nothing in the words that I speak unto you, their spirit and their life. The words that I speak unto you, their spirit and their life. That word will conquer every power that opposes your life, opposes your ministry. In Jesus' name, I have the word. I have the word. Speak that word, the word only. There will be healing. There will be salvation, there will be deliverance, there will be provision. All the needs of your life, they are answered, they are fulfilled, they are supplied in Jesus' name. Let's come back now, let's come back now to Psalm 68 and we're reading from verse, reading from verse 11. Psalm 68 and we're reading from verse 11 and look at what it says it says the Lord gave the word and great was the company of those that published it great was the company of those that published it the word of God tells us as Christ gave the word to his own disciples and to his own, uh, to his own people they that were scattered abroad went everywhere preaching the word salvation was taking place healing taking place and miracles taking place and this is our own time now this is my time and as you go with the word, miracles are going to be happening in Jesus' name. Look at Mark chapter 16. I'm reading from verse 20. Mark chapter 16. We're reading from verse 20. Look at what it says. And they went forth. Anybody going to go forth today? And they went forth. I said, anybody going to go forth today? 
you go forth with assurance. You go forth with conviction. And you know that as you go, with the word, the Lord will walk with you because of the word in your mouth in Jesus' name. And they went forth and preached everywhere. The Lord walking with them. The Lord walking with them. Will the Lord walk with you? Will the Lord go with you? Confirming the word, confirming the word, confirming the word was signs following. And everybody said, Let's come back to Psalm 68. Looking at verse 68, we're looking at verse 19. Psalm 68, verse 19. For Psalm 68, verse 19. Blessed be the Lord who daily loadeth us, us who pray, us who praise his name, us who believe his name, us who go forth in the strength and the assurance of the Lord. Blessed be the Lord who daily loadeth us with benefits, even the God of our salvation. Praise the Lord. Everybody, I said, praise the Lord. From today, every day, you'll find the hand of the Lord in your life. Miracle of the Lord in your life. Blessing of the Lord in your life. As you're praying and praising the Lord, answers to your prayers in Jesus' name. No crying anymore. No weeping anymore. No poverty anymore no oppression anymore blessing upon blessing upon your life in jesus name as you praise the lord the lord will inhabit the praises of his children he will inhabit your house he'll inhabit all your surrounding and great will be the benefits he load you load you load you with every time in jesus name that's what i believe that's what I believe. That's what I believe. And that is what I'm going to receive. Why don't you rise up then and tell the Lord, I believe, I believe, I believe, and I receive. As you praise the Lord, as you glorify the Lord, as you honor the Lord, as you sing the praises of the Lord, as you make his praises to be known, he'll daily load you with blessings in your life in Jesus' name.